जस्ट लाइक हाउ इन रियल लाइफ जो दिखता है वो बिकता है इट ऑल्सो काइंड ऑफ वर्क अ लिटिल विट इन योर एग्जामिनेशन ऑल्सो सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द बेस्ट प्रेजेंटेशन प्रैक्टिस दैट आई हैव पर्सनली यूज टू गेट द ऑल इंडिया रैंक दिस इज बेसिकली अ सीक्रेट सॉर्स दैट कैन एक्चुअली गिव यू टेन टू फिफ्टीन एक्स्ट्रा मार्क्स इन योर एग्जामिनेशन Often what happens is that a student has studied a lot but when it comes to writing down the answers in the examination then those words don't come out the presentation doesn't come out and the way they actually write the paper it doesn't show that they are confident enough about the concepts that they have studied and that is why sometimes they don't get the marks that they actually deserve now if you want to ace in your examination then merely reading the concepts revising them so many times is not enough you should also be really presentable in the examination your paper should basically stand out from the 10 papers ahead of you and 10 papers behind you even if you know the concept a little bit but you have very good english you have very good presentation skills and you have written the answer with a lot more confidence underlining the key points then possibly you will get more marks than a person who knows all the concepts who has written all the provisions but his presentation is not as good so you might as well capitalize on this one thing this one presentation skill is an underrated skill it is easy to learn it does not require a lot of efforts i'm going to tell you everything that you need to know in this video so without wasting any more time let's just get started but before we start make sure that you have subscribed to this channel i am cscs yogita harjani make sure to like this video and also share it with your friends now let's start off the first thing that we need to know is that when you talk about your law paper whether it is cscs or cma paper then the questions that you get are mostly case study based questions some of the questions are direct and some of the questions are differentiation based questions also so let's talk about how you have to write all of these three types of questions right if we talk about those answers where you have to differentiate between two or three concepts then in that case simply make a table the first column in that table will be the basis column where you are going to write the basis of differentiation then the next few columns will be for actually writing down the differentiation between the different points next let's talk about direct questions now direct questions are those questions where in you have to basically write the exact provision from law so you do not have to analyze what your answer is going to be you simply have to remember what you have studied whatever you remember about that concept please frame it into points okay so even if it's a big paragraph you can frame it into 3 4 points right and accordingly you can write it in points or paragraphs form if you can possibly give headings to each of these points then that is even better you can give headings and accordingly write internal points to it Next let's talk about case study based questions. Now 70 to 80% of your law paper comes in the form of case study based questions only. Now these case study based questions are basically a case or a scenario that is given to you. A did this, B did that, this company did this and that director did that. And then you have to analyze based on your understanding of that statute or that act or those rules. whether this person has done right or wrong now when you get this kind of a question you don't just have to remember the provision but you also have to analyze the provision how it is applicable to this given case now whenever you are writing a case study based answer then you have to write in four different headings the first one is going to be the section the second one is going to be the provision then you have to do the analysis and then you have to give your conclusion right so when we say section you have to specify the section of that particular act which you are referring to Now please note if you do not remember the section or if you have doubt about the section number then please skip this part of the answer do not mention the section number even if your provision is right even if your analysis and conclusion is right but the section number is wrong then the examiner might simply cross your entire answer and give you zero marks so don't take a chance with the section number the next thing you have to mention is the provision now here you simply have to remember that section what did that section say what is the law stated in that particular section of the act and you simply have to write it down here right now sometimes it may be possible that that actual section is really long then in that case you don't always have to write down the entire section it may be possible that the question is only referring to part of that entire provision which is covered in that section in that case you only have to reproduce that relevant part of that entire section now in analysis you have already stated the provision you have to apply this provision to the facts of the case right so in the case a did this b did this or the company or the director did this and b or it is as per the particular provision that you have mentioned you have to do the analysis over here the last part of the answer should be your conclusion now finally based on the above analysis and the provision what do you finally think should be the answer so in the conclusion you give the final verdict so you are going to start the conclusion by writing as discussed above 
and then you say specify a is right and b is wrong or a should be penalized and b should not be penalized now let's talk about some additional intricate details in presentation that you have to follow in every single question when you're writing the answer now the first point is you have to ensure that from the beginning of the paper you maintain a good speed right generally what happens is that in the beginning the first few answers the student is writing with a very good handwriting keeping a wonderful presentation but after half of the paper they realize that very little time is remaining and then they have to just try to finish the paper somehow so they write very very fast and so what happens is part of the presentation is really good the other part of the presentation is very bad so in that case what you have to do is from the very beginning of the paper try and write very fast also before you start writing the answer it's very important to frame the answer in your mind if you directly start writing the answer later on after completing the answer you might remember that there was this one point also that you wanted to write but now there is no space to write that so in order to avoid that situation before you start writing the answer take 30 seconds and just frame all the points that you want to write and then start writing the answer apart from descriptive answers for ca students you also have 30 mark portion of your multiple choice questions now in multiple choice questions also you might get case study based multiple choice questions or direct multiple choice questions now it is very important to be very fast when you're solving these multiple choice questions now how will you increase the speed well for that you need to have practice now practice has to be done before the examination already every single day on the community tab on this channel i'm posting one multiple choice question that you guys solve apart from that if you want to practice more you can visit a platform called ed games now on this platform there are a bunch of multiple choice questions that you can solve together in one go there is a timer that you get on top of these bunch of questions that you are solving to check how is your speed in solving those questions and then later on you get the analysis of this entire test or also whether you got 60% marks 70% marks also and to make it a little more interesting they have added this feature of challenging your friend also in a particular mcu kind of a competition so you guys can send the link to your friends also it's a free login so there's no harm in trying and practicing through this app the link of this app is in the description box below coming back to your descriptive answers it is important to note that whenever you are writing these answers you highlight the important points that you have stated so when you're writing the provision the key points in the provision for example if there's a net worth limit or a turnover limit then you have to underline that particular point that way what happens is you are basically reflecting confidence that you are sure that this is the answer also for the examiner you're making his life easy the moment he sees your answer he can clearly see the underlined points and he will directly be able to understand that you have written the right provision or not another thing that you can do to highlight the words is you can write them in capital letters instead of writing it in flow handwriting right so it is up to you now when will you highlight these important lines and points well will you come back after the end of the paper to every single question to highlight and underline every single line well the answer is no the moment you're actually writing and solving the answer that time only please underline the key important points because later on if you think that you will be left with some time to come back Back and then underline the key important points it doesn't happen that way the paper is very lengthy there is very limited time available so you might not be able to come back the next important point is that every single answer that you write should start from a fresh page so let's say you're doing question number one question number one might have different parts to it a b c d e when you do a part then start from a fresh page when you do b part start from a fresh page then accordingly do every single question from a fresh page now it might be possible that you're solving an answer on one page let's say half of the page is consumed in the answer of part b of question one then after that half of the page is remaining then do you start part c in that page or do you start it from the next page well see the thing is you have paid the fees and you can consume as many sheets as you want so here it is suggested that you start part c answer from the next page it makes you look more confident and sorted as a person and it makes it easier for the examiner to check the paper next is also a very simple tip you have to leave lines between every single paragraph in the same answer also for example in the case study based questions we discussed that you have to write in four parts now between all of these points you have to leave one line now sometimes even in provision you might have to write the provision in two parts in two different paragraphs in that case between every single paragraph also leave one line it just makes the presentation look a lot better it makes the answer look clean next thing you have to remember is that for every single question if it has internal parts then you have to write all the internal parts together for example if question one has a b c d parts 
parts then you have to write a b c d one after another now internally you can change the sequence you can do first a and then c and then b and then d that's okay that's absolutely fine but you have to basically do all of these parts together it may be possible that out of all of these four parts you remember part a part b but for part c you do not remember the provision you do not know the answer in that case what you can do is for the time being you can leave one page or two page for part c once you have completed the entire paper you can come back to part c and then you can try to solve it there let's say that you do not know an answer at all for example this part c is something which you have not studied at all you do not know it at all it's a case based question in that case also try to at least attempt the question okay so just write an introduction or maybe based on your common sense or understanding of the law what do you think whether a has done right or b has done right at least write something properly in that answer at least attempt the answer the worst that can happen is that that answer might go wrong and you might get zero marks right so any which ways if you don't attempt the answer you will get zero marks so you might as well if you have time try and attempt the answer that way there is a possibility of getting half mark or one mark in the scaling process now when you're writing the law paper it is important that you mention the keywords relating to law now what are keywords keywords means the technical jargon relating to that law so when you study companies act you study general meetings annual general meetings extraordinary general meetings you study the type of directors you study key managerial person these are technical jargon that we don't use as layman terms we don't use them in any other subjects we use these terms only in companies act so with respect to any particular institute there are certain key words that are there right now make sure that when you're writing the answer you mention these keywords properly we remember annual general meeting as agm we remember extraordinary general meeting as egm we remember registrar of companies as roc so we make short forms of those big words just for our understanding but when you're actually writing the answer in the examination never use these short forms always write the entire full form of those words right so write registrar of companies annual general meeting in full form right this is a professional examination that we are giving and when we write the answers we have to show that we are professionals who are capable of solving real life problems actually writing these documentations in real life and so we have to reflect that in our paper as well now sometimes when we are writing the answer sometimes we make some mistakes in spellings or something in the examination what happens is we get nervous and then we scribble out that entire spelling properly we draw these horizontal lines and vertical lines we basically try to do everything to remove that entire word by crossing it right it shows that you're very nervous so try not to do that instead of doing that simply cross it with one single horizontal line or maybe two horizontal lines that's pretty much all it shows that you're confident in general and that you're comfortable with making mistakes but you also know that it was a mistake many students ask this question whether we are supposed to write the language of law in the paper well the answer is no apart from the keywords as we have discussed the remaining language can be your plain natural english language right you do not have to have fancy handwriting you do not need to have flamboyant english to impress right you simply need to know english and your grammar should be correct and you should write it neatly you do not have to copy the language of law you can write the provisions of law in your own language the next tip is add indentation now what is indentation if you have ever created a word file then when you write the title, title it is written on the left most side and then after that when you write the paragraph inside it what we usually do is we shift it a little towards the right side and after that if we write internal points to that paragraph then those points are further shifted towards the right side right so what happens is that there is an invisible margin which is created on the left side and this margin keeps growing as there are more and more internal points right so that is exactly how you have to write your answers in the examination also internal if you're writing any sub points then shift them slightly more towards the right side so that way your answer is going to look a lot more better appearance wise and this definitely has an impact on the impression that you make on the examiner so i hope you have understood how you have to present the answer if you have any more questions regarding the presentation of the answers please let me know in the comment section down below so i'm going to see you again in another video meanwhile take care and all the very best bye bye